Opa, Opa. Jump there, jump there, Opa. Yeah, whenever he's ready, go for it. We don't know much about this turn. One of the rarest seabirds in the world. It was well presumed extinct. It was rediscovered in the year 2000. So we spent our first day in the field here testing the trap uh, and training the team in how to use that trap. Okay. 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 Yeah, testing. I'll uh, I'll fire it from here, and then we'll continue to back up a little bit, and I can fire it again. Three, two, one. Great. We then gave it some time to see if birds would come to the sandbar, and no birds came the first day. Not completely unexpected. Um, Birds are quite intelligent and they recognize uh, when something has been modified or when there's something strange. We have birds fly over the first day and look at the sandbar and it seemed like they wanted to land, but it seemed like they were confused or nervous about the presence of the trap in the following days. What we implemented was eliminating the other places where birds could land and rest. We took a very low impact approach, but basically we would just have people walk out into the water around them. The birds would not be comfortable with a person walking up to their rock. They would get up and fly and look for a different resting place. Many of the birds uh, uh, took another look again at the sandbar. Oh yeah. As the tide came in, they moved closer and closer to our trap. We're sitting in a boat in the water just a short distance away from the sandbar, watching very carefully to see if birds are in the right position. Um, and as they get closer and closer... We get more excited and more nervous, and <laughs> um, and so we have to remain calm, uh, be very careful about where birds are. We need to make sure birds are in the capture area. Uh, we need to make sure that uh, birds are in places where their uh, safety is assured. Communicate well with the team so that everybody knows the uh, net is going to be fired very soon um, and knows what their responsibilities are when it's fired. And then uh, once we have all of that in place, we're ready to go ahead and fire. Whenever he's ready, go for it. focused on uh, the conservation of Chinese crested terns, but um, there's very few of them. And so we've been very cautious about 
uh, handling them, and it's also very difficult to isolate and capture, you know, one or just a handful of individuals uh, in a group. So we have uh, chosen to tag a very closely related tern species, the greater crested tern. But they're so closely related that they can actually interbreed. Um, they often nest together in colonies, um, and so they have a lot of the same habits. Here in Indonesia, um, they spend time together, uh, just as they do uh, when breeding. Um, so by seeing where greater crested terns go in Indonesia and the kinds of habitats that they use, um, we can learn a lot about what terns and seabirds in general need here in Indonesia and what resources, you know, what kind of food, uh, what kind of safe roosting places uh, are important. And if we uh, work to protect those resources for greater crested terns, we'll be protecting them for Chinese crested terns and other seabirds as well. I live in Seram Island. This bird we never hear before. We just know as a chamar. Chamar is mean like all the terns or ghouls. We just say that chamar. I really hope that this project will be continued for the future. Um, maybe making socialization to the local community or the, to the school or something like that. Will awareness and also uh, we'll know that this place is uh, important for the critical bird. This place is going to be established as a marine protected area, and we have tagged several critical crested terns. Data of the satellite tracking of these critical crested terns will guide us to find the best place for finding other wintering Chinese crested terns. Establishing a protected area is not enough. I hope the local community will accept the conservation work and have a sense of ownership towards the environment. They have to feel proud of this, and they should be giving a bit of benefit from this protection project. And that's the reason why we would like to raise the awareness of conservation amongst the local community. We would also like to explore other possibilities or management work of the site, including some well-planted ecotourism. And I believe it will be beneficial to the local community and it will get more people to support the conservation of Chinese crested tern and other seabirds in Indonesia. <laughs>